Hi, good morning everyone. I would like to kindly thank each one of you for joining us live from Massa University, South Jalaputra. I am Nelson Atpudra John from the Faculty of Health Sciences, Massa University, and I will be moderating today's session. Today's webinar is hosted by the Faculty of Health Sciences, Massa University. And the title for today's webinar is Tele-Rehabilitation in Cardiorespiratory Physiotherapy. Dear viewers, before we proceed further, I would like to give you a brief overview of the programs offered by our faculty, the Faculty of Health Sciences at Massa University. So I will project my slides to brief you on the programs offered in our faculty. Okay, it's so us is a faculty of health sciences, and we have different programs like physiotherapy, medical imaging, environmental health, and occupational safety and health. And uh, with all these programs, we have the School of Physiotherapy, Department of Environmental Health, and Department of Medical Imaging. So in School of Physiotherapy, we have different programs ranging from uh, we offer diploma courses right through to uh, masters. So we have diploma in physiotherapy, uh, bachelor of physiotherapy honors, uh, bachelor of uh, physiotherapy honors, which we run in ODL mode, which is online and distance learning. And we also have master of physiotherapy. And uh, similarly, in department of environmental health, we have the diploma program in environmental health, uh, bachelor of environmental health and safety honors. And uh, we also have that running as an ODL, which is an online and distance learning mode. And we also have diploma in occupational safety and health. And in the Department of Medical Imaging, we have the diploma course running, diploma in medical imaging. And we have bachelor's, bachelor of medical imaging honors. And we also have bachelor of medical imaging running as an ODL online and distance learning for the um, comfortability of the students. And uh, why join uh, health sciences? Okay, so health sciences is, I mean, the courses offered or when you study health sciences, you have a high job demand because the courses or the uh, the stream which you study is would be one of an essential service for the society. So it, is, it will be always in a high demand and you don't have a boarding work routine. You have uh, a salience in your work uh, atmosphere and you have lucrative remuneration low risk of job redundancy because uh, this cannot be fully automated and you have a high opportunity to work in a variety of settings and uh, you have a career in your hand which you can feel good about and uh, let me go uh, to the programs offered we have a uh, master of physiotherapy which is running as a full-time program and a part-time program in the full-time program it is a one-year program and uh, the part-time is a two-year program and uh, the eligibility or the Entry requirement for joining this is a bachelor's degree with a level 6 MQF or any equivalent with a minimum CGP of 2.50 in related field as accepted by SNF. Or it can be a bachelor's degree or equivalent not meeting CGP of 2.50, but still can be accepted with uh, the student having a minimum of five years working experience in the related field. And uh, we also have an English proficiency as an entry requirement. Uh, for complete details about this entry requirement and about the course, you can visit www.masa.edu.my. So these are the bachelor programs which we offer in our faculty. We have the Bachelor of Physiotherapy Honors, uh, Bachelor of Physiotherapy Honors running as an open and distance learning mode. Uh, we have Bachelor of Environmental Health and Safety Honors. And we also have Bachelor of Environmental Health and Safety running as an ODL. So that would be more easy for uh, uh, those who are working and you can still pursue that study and we have bachelor of medical imaging as honors and uh, the same we also have it as an ODL and online and distance learning more so the entry requirement for the bachelors is a minimum CG, a GP of 2.33 in two of the following subjects namely uh, biology physics mathematics or chemistry or a level with minimum grade D in two of the following subjects, namely biology, physics, mathematics, or chemistry. And uh, the candidate can also be a diploma. He can hold a diploma 
with a minimum CGP of 2.75 in the related field. Or if the CGP is less than 2.75, uh, they need to have a minimum of three years working experience in the related field. And we also have a variety of diploma programs running. We have the diploma in physiotherapy, uh, diploma in environmental health, and diploma in medical imaging. And the entry requirement for this is uh, should be an SPM with pass in Mbasa Malayu and English, uh, with carrying five credits in the following subjects, uh, namely mathematics and one science subject and any other three subjects. Or the candidate can be a GC or O level with a pass in Basa Malayu or English and a grade 5 C in the following subjects, namely mathematics and one science subject and any other three subjects. Or the candidate may hold a certificate as a level 3 MQF uh, in the field of health sciences, particularly with a minimum CGP of 2.75. So the complete details about the program and the entry requirement, you can uh, log into www masa.edu.my to get the full details. And uh, we have Diploma in Occupational Safety and Health too, which is a three-year program running in the, in the faculty. And the entry requirement is, uh, it could, should be an SPM with a pass in Basa Malayu, and uh, also with English, and uh, having three credits in the following subjects, namely mathematics or one science subject and any other two subjects. Or the candidate may have a whole level with pass in Basa Malaysia and English uh, and having three credits in the following subjects, namely uh, mathematics or one science subject and any other two subjects. Or he may hold a certificate related to the health science uh, and with a minimum CGP of a 2.50. So why choose Masa? Masa always has an infinite excellence in what it aspires to provide to each of its graduates. So excellence is what is being offered here with respect to teaching and learning and the overall development of the student. And why choose Faculty of Health Sciences in Masa University? In our faculty, we have an experienced and dedicated international pool of academic staff. And we have a variety of uh, study modes like the conventional mode, the online and, and the open and distance learning mode. And uh, we have cross teaching by experts from various faculties because Mass University has the most number of health disciplines in a single institution. And we have interactive teaching uh, with main emphasis on hands-on and clinical skills. We have the face-to-face -face platforms and we also have online platforms uh, through our learning management system. And uh, we are attached with a wide range of a uh, wide list of hospitals and institutions for clinical and industrial placements where the, the uh, student can be on the environment and it can be on hands-on and the uh, in place learning and all the courses are accredited by MQB and JPA with international recognition and you also have a dual award program with ARU mainly for the bachelor's program so for the uh, um, benefit of the student MASA is also offering some scholarships where uh, financial restraint should not be a factor in restricting a student pursuing a course so in that aspect, MASA is offering various scholarships like uh, G. Abdullah Academic Excellence Scholarship, Foundation Scholarship, Blue Ribbon Scholarship, School Teacher Scholarship, Family Scholarship, and Single Parent Scholarship. For the details about these scholarships, you can always visit uh, www.masa.ag.my where you can get the details of uh, these scholarships and how to uh, avail for them. And uh, we also have collaborations and affiliations with various universities, like we have con I mean, with the uh, WCPT and we have uh, attachment with the Malaysian Physiotherapy Association. And as I said before, we have a dual award with the Anglia Ruskin University and we have student mobility programs with the EO Society University, Chiang Mai University, and we have a lovely professional university from India, Shalama and the International Federation of Environmental Health. So all these are some of the universities where we have a tie up, uh, where there is an exchange of knowledge and information between us and them. So in this respect, we have a student mobility program where we send students so that they can get exposed to the subjects in uh, different parts of the world. And what you see here is a, a student mobility program where the students went to uh, Edu Society University, uh, where there was an exchange of knowledge and skills. And uh, here you can see uh, some of the students have gone for a lovely professional university in India for uh, exchange of knowledge and skills. 
so this uh, we have an active student mobility program okay because uh, getting skill uh, not only in a malaysian scenario but also in an international scenario so that uh, the the exposure and the skills is developed in an overall manner so these are some of the programs which we have offer which are offering in faculty of health sciences and for more details you can always uh, log into facebook uh, instagram and twitter these are some of the when these are the pages of our university and uh, mainly our faculty of health sciences so you can get all this information uh, in these pages so let me stop sharing so now we come to the main agenda which is the webinar for today So please free, feel free to contact us through MASA website or our faculty Facebook page to know more about our programs or simply leave a comment and we'll get back to you. So for this webinar, your questions uh, concerning this can be listed in the chat box for discussion during the question and answer session. So dear viewers, an e-certificate will be provided for this webinar and to be eligible for the certificate, please fill in the survey form. The link to the survey will be provided at the end of the seminar and can be found in the comment section. And uh, for today's topic, today's topic is on tele-rehabilitation. Tele-rehabilitation is a part of telemedicine, which strives to provide rehabilitation services using modern telecommunication devices. This webinar provides an overview of the importance of tele-rehabilitation in the current landscape and the benefits of tele-rehabilitation for cardiorespiratory conditions mainly. So this webinar will introduce you to some of the smart apps for physiotherapy application, especially in the cardiorespiratory field. And for this webinar, we have an expert speaker among us. Let me introduce you to our expert speaker for today, Madam Sabita Yunus Rajima. Madam Sabita graduated from uh, with a master's degree in cardiorespiratory physiotherapy from Dr. MGM Medical University, India. She has over 15 years of working experience, both as a lecturer and clinical therapist in several countries. And with this, I hand over the session to Madam Sabita. Thank you, Mr. Nelson, for the introduction. Good morning, viewers. Uh, straight away, go to our webinar session for today. Let me share my slides first. Today we are going to discuss about tele rehabilitation in cardiorespiratory therapy. So we all know that the past two years we have been um, under a pandemic, and the pandemic has had an adverse effect on everyone's health. So tele rehabilitation and telemedicine has come to save a lot of people during this poor time. So tele rehabilitation is not a new concept. So it goes way back to the 1940s uh, in the name of telemedicine and telerehabilitation is a part of telemedicine. In 1940s, telemedicine started as a part of phone consultations where the people in the remote places, they were not able to get health services and so people were reached out to the phone consultation. And telerehabilitation started or becoming popular among the 1980s. And during the recent times, uh, this has gained more popularity and people have started to do more tele-rehabilitation and a lot of research work has been done on the effectiveness of tele-rehabilitation. So the COVID-19 pandemic has affected the world in an unusual way. Disease load and casualties are still on the rise. And crisis influence is spreading across developing countries. This pandemic has affected the healthcare department that is treating the patients suffering from diseases other than corona. Digitalization and automation have proved to be the solution in this challenging phase. Telemedicine and telephysiotherapy for online consultancy have changed the time in a positive way. Conducting live sessions reduces the psychological risk to the patient 
and also it's beneficial for the motivation of the child. Tele rehabilitation increases the level of treatment for people with disorders in both physical and mental well-being, lowers hospital expenses, and strengthens conventional face-to-face practice. So we'll see uh, what is the role of tele rehabilitation in physiotherapy. So basically, physiotherapy is a treatment method method where we use more of rehabilitation. So uh, we have to spend more time with the patient, let's say three months, six months, nine months. These are some of the time frames that we have to spend with the patient to rehabilitate them. So during the pandemic, so this was not possible. So one uh, one thing is that uh, the staff were built up, the whole world was running to treat COVID patients, COVID patients, whereas the other, other few categories of patients were not being um, um, uh, properly taken care of. So, tele rehabilitation helped in taking care of these people during the pandemic time. So, physiotherapy plays a significant role in the application. However, the emergence of the corona disease in 2019 has posed a big challenge to its practice, especially regarding the level of contact with patients. There is a dire need for the exploration of rehabilitation options other than in-person contacts to limit the spread of the virus. Conventionally, for an individual to access the services of a physiotherapist, there is a need for a scheduled physical appointment to meet with the physiotherapist at a designated location. However, the advent of technology has bridged the gap that might exist between local patients, practitioners, and patients. With continually improving communication technology has been employed to provide remote healthcare services, and this is a concept of tele-rehabilitation. So we go into the definition, we'll see what is tele-rehabilitation, or it's also called a e-rehabilitation. It's the delivery of rehabilitation services over telecommunication networks and the internet. Tele-rehabilitation allows patients to interact with providers remotely and can be used both to assist patients and to deliver therapy. Fields of medicine that utilize tele-rehabilitation include physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech, language pathology, audiology, and psychology. Therapy sessions can be individual or community-based Types of therapy available include motor training, exercises, speech therapy, virtual reality, robotic therapy, goal setting, and group Commonly used modalities include webcams, video conferencing, phone lines, video phones, and web pages containing rich internet applications. Brennan et al. described tele rehabilitation habilitation or rehabilitation services that are provided by a rehabilitation professional remotely, which is useful for assessment, monitoring, prevention, intervention, supervision, education, consultation, and counseling. So all these are part of the rehabilitation component, which will be, uh, will be seen in detail further down. So tele-rehabilitation uh, incorporates all these a form of methods to assess the patient and treat the patient. It comprises the use of video conferencing via the internet, phone calls, and virtual reality where remote interactions with patients can either be real time or real time. So, what are the benefits of tele rehabilitation? Once um, we incorporate a tele rehabilitation, so what are the benefits that we can have? So, what is increased patient age of access? I told you, tele rehabilitation can be two different um, areas, remote places, and also like for people who cannot um, come and go um, every time. Let's say when you go for a rehabilitation, you have an inpatient rehabilitation as well as an outpatient rehabilitation. So people will always go through an inpatient rehabilitation, but always there is a dropout in the outpatient rehabilitation. So many of them don't come back for the outpatient rehabilitation. So daily rehabilitation will be able to reach these people. So once they have a consent for daily rehabilitation, they can go, uh, go, they can have their 
treatment or have the excessive training program to everything. Next is decreased missed visit rates. So, Kelly rehabilitation also helps them because it, uh, it gives them an opportunity to do the rehabilitation uh, or do the exercise wherever they are, whether they are at the workplace or whether they are at their uh, home or wherever they can just log into their um, uh, computers and they can do a, a, a exercise program. And next is cost savings, especially the travel uh, expenses. There are a lot of people who travel from different areas to come and get treatment in a particular hospital or particular center. So uh, they cannot uh, come back, uh, stay in a place, and then uh, they have to think about their expenses. And all that. So these can be cut short by using a telecommunication. And then, uh, as I mentioned before, it can be performed in a variety of locations at the home, work, etc. And then patient satisfaction is equal. So studies have proved that um, just like the center-based rehabilitation or the uh, inpatient rehabilitation, the tele uh, rehabilitation has an equal effectiveness. So it is uh, it is as efficient as a center-based rehabilitation. So these are some of the benefits of tele rehabilitation. Then what are the limitations? So what limits this tele rehabilitation? First is patient technology challenges. So everyone everyone is not. Uh, uh, um, everyone is not very familiar with the technology, so that is one of the major uh, challenges we face in daily rehabilitation. So this limitation can be overcome by giving more uh, training to the people or making them understand uh, how to use the technology, give them training for using the technology, and then we can improve this. And then internet connectivity challenges. So the internet connectivity or the broadband is not available everywhere. And also, even if it's available, so there might be internet issues, the connectivity problems, and all those things. So, uh, that is another challenge or another limitation in daily rehabilitation. Then, hands on approach. So, there are certain conditions or certain cases where you cannot give the whole treatment based on monitoring or supervising the patient. So, you have to do some hands on approaches, which is needed. So, in those patients or those conditions, there is patients will be limited. And then considering for patients with balance, so especially patients who are of uh, aged, who have balance problems, coordination problems, so these patients will be a limitation for telehealth. Why telehealth? So why uh, incorporating a telehealth? So first is a storage of and access to the patient's medical records for many of patients. Next, having a personal program of rehabilitation exercises specifically adapted to the patient's physical condition, real-time control and monitoring of the patient by the expert, remote adaptation exercises, and continuous interaction between doctor, physiotherapist, and patient. Patient empowerment and adherence to treatment thanks to the biofeedback they receive in real time during the execution of the Comfort when performing the exercises as they can be done where and when the patient wants. So we go to the tele-rehabilitation process. So how they it is all they all start this way. So before going into the tele-rehabilitation, is first you the patient comes for all the treatment, the problem. So first we do an assessment on the patient. Okay, once the, uh, there is an assessment done on the patient, we will be doing, so this assessment includes, includes a patient interview as well as a physical assessment or, and some investigations which is done on the patient. So with the assessment that is done, we identify the patient. So once the patient problem is identified, so we, do, we have set our goals. So what are the goals for this patient? So short-term goals and long-term goals. And then once your goals are identified, then relevant factors. So what are the problems for the uh, ideas or we brainstorm ourselves to, for the um, problems solving uh, treatment for this patient. So what kind of treatment? So how uh, how this particular problem can be solved. So that will be brainstorm. And then you go to the interven intervention section. So what type of intervention can be given for this patient. So then you plan the treatment for the patient. So once the planning is done, then uh, treatment for recovery and the support for maintaining quality of life. So two things. One is 
uh, the treatment. So it's, it, it's both the treatment as well as the hands-on treatment as well as the uh, support for maintaining the follicular. So this treatment for recovering here, it can be a center base for a therapist. So before going into this, we need to select our patients. So who are the patients who can be involved in daily rehabilitation and who are the patients who can who has to be in um, with the yeah, physiotherapist uh, in physiotherapist care. Okay, so that should be um, identified uh, before the treatment uh, for recovering this. So once if the patient comes under the criteria of daily rehabilitation, we can give them give him training for daily rehabilitation and give him all the instructions how to do and uh, the um, the setup of daily rehabilitation and everything, and then we can start uh, giving them. So along with the treatment treatment we give them a support for maintaining quality of life so this is the advice the professional advice for the education that we give for the patient to maintain the quality so lifestyle what are the different lifestyle changes that they have to take care and then what are the professional resources so the professional resources here means the daily rehabilitation resources so what are the things so there will be anything or a laptop they have need a broadband connectivity so they can speak for uh, they need the headphones and um, the some equipment which they need for monitoring themselves or they can use smart apps and or watches and all those things to monitor self assessment techniques. All those things should be um, um, all those things should be um, these are the professional resources which is needed for the patient. And then the treatment area. So once all is set up and then we start doing the treatment area. So after the delivery of treatment, so this is also like even if, even if it's a daily rehabilitation, there is a continuous monitoring of the patient through the um, screen, like through the laptop. So we just uh, uh, observe the patient throughout the session. We see how they are um, doing, performing. And uh, so at the end of the session, the patient will give you the um, response, like the heart rate, the blood pressure, the uh, oxygen saturation rate. So based on the treatment delivery and the response from the patient and the assessment plan, you will go for evaluation to check whether, whether the treatment is effective or not. So if the treatment is not effective, then we go for the intervention techniques again to change our pattern of So components of tele-rehabilitation. Uh, tele-rehabilitation is also like the center-based rehabilitation, the user rehabilitation, the components are all the same. So, uh, the only difference here is the, um, giving this treatment through the information technology or, or through the uh, software and hardware. So the the infrastructure, IT infrastructure that is needed to incorporate this study rehabilitation is uh, hardware like computers, videos, uh, audio and telephone and then we have the software and video conferencing system and the virtual reality and networking like internet and uh, provision of daily rehabilitation you can do it in two way real time visits with audio, video, or both, and then asynchronous e visits, virtual check ins, remote evaluation, recorded videos or images, telephone assessment and management. So, uh, going into the components of daily rehabilitation, so first we do an assessment, like I told you in the process, we do an assessment. So this assessment is based on some patient interviews. So we just interview the patient for the history, and we also take some information from the case notes and everything. And then we have the typical assessment and diagnosis, so which we do on the patient. So in, when it comes to a daily rehabilitation session, we have at least a one sitting with the patient to do the assessment. So based on the assessment, only the therapist can decide whether the patient will be eligible for a daily rehabilitation or not. Okay, and then we go to the treatment component. Okay, the treatment component, we have different uh, parts in that. Uh, exercise training. So this is one of the important components in the rehabilitation. So in the exercise, we follow the FIT principle when you are, when you are uh, giving an exercise description. We follow the uh, frequency, intensity, the time and time. So these are some what is the mode of exercise that we want the patient to do. So the mode is like whether it is uh, of treadmill walking or you want the patient to so do a running, cycling, uh, or you know, uh, what weight, weight exercise or resistance exercises, what are the type of exercise that you are prescribing. And then what is the 
a time duration. So what is the duration of the exercise? Whether you want to give it for 15 minutes, you want the patient to have it for half an hour or 45 minutes, whether you want to give it as a continuous training, you want to give it as an intermittent training, and then what type of intensity. So normally for CRD, the intensity is based on the, the HR rate, the maximum HR, or based on the time duration, or based on the net level, the metabolic equivalent level, this is how we fix the intensity for a CRD application. And the frequency, so how many times do you want to do it? So let's say you want to do it every day, or three times a week, or only two times monitoring, so how do you want to do that? So it's all involved in the exercise training and exercise prescription. And when we go to the patient education, normally, like we give a patient education for the patient to have more knowledge about the condition. So the patient has to know what he is going through. So only then he will be able to uh, cooperate well with the patient. And then by giving the patient education, we are decreasing the anxiety or depression level for the patient. So this is most common in CR patients. So whenever they feel that uh, they are going through something, they are psychologically they are disordered. They feel that they are no more useful for the family or useful for anyone. So this leads them into a depression. So that should be reduced. By educating the patient, the patient is understanding the condition. So if the patient is understanding his prognosis level, the patient is understanding what uh, he can do, how he can be rehabilitated. So that will help him to decrease his anxiety levels and avoid entering into a depression. And then next is facilitating a recovery. So when um, the patient is understanding the concept well, he will cooperate well with the treatment. So that will help to facilitate the recovery. Okay. And then again, patient education also includes um, uh, lifestyle changes, teaching the patient how to handle lifestyle changes. And then the maintenance program. So this usually like um, uh, the maybe the tele rehab visits will reduce during the maintenance program. There is no um, uh, frequent monitoring of the patient, but maintenance program usually is lifelong. We have to continue doing it uh, lifelong um, to maintain whatever they have gained during the rehabilitation program. And self-management intervention is something uh, like the patient will have to learn how to assess themselves, how to use the uh, apps that is available and how to measure their own uh, vital signs and inform to the uh, concerned physiotherapist or the physician. So in, in, in self-management also, like taking care of themselves, even a lifestyle uh, adaptation, like um, no smoking, no drinking, and uh, changing their eating pattern, having a balanced diet, food, how to manage stress, all this is so this um, is about uh, particularly about the cardiopulmonary tele-rehabilitation component. So uh, we do this tele-rehabilitation in three uh, as three parts. One is risk factor management, and then the whole person care and then fitness and function. So a risk factor management is like a person who are under risk for identifying your risk. So risk is something, risk factor is something uh, which tells a person that in future they may have a, a risk of having this um, heart problem or a um, stroke, whatever it is. So, so risk factor is something which is just like a warning, which tells you that there are chances. If you don't take care of your health now, there are chances for you to have a, a problem in the later future or later so the first uh, is a risk factor management. So what are the things that we, uh, we see in a risk factor is uh, weight management, lipid management, diet or nutrition counseling, blood pressure management, and skin position. These are some of the modifiable risk factors by taking proper care, by doing uh, exercises, by doing going for rehabilitation, maintaining your fitness level. So these um, risk factors can be the second is the whole care center, that is patient assessment and psychological management, so like medical evaluation. So this you can go for regular follow-up hospitalization. Let's say if you're having a risk factor, you can identify with a risk factor, you'll go for an assessment and then you can continue doing the rehabilitation to prevent any further, um, further incident in the later. Okay. 
So let's say you already have a problem and then we'll go for a medication assessment process. Again, follow the previous daily rehabilitation process that we saw. So going for the patient education and then having a sort of patient assessment and then going through all the process of the daily rehabilitation. So apart from uh, this, we have the holistic care. So whenever you say rehabilitation, rehabilitation includes you have to rehabilitate the patient physically, mentally, and psychologically, and socially. All the three components of health are important when it comes to rehabilitation. So uh, holistic care is also important, and psychological, psychosocial management is also very important in daily rehabilitation. So these components are also covered when we do a daily it's not only the physical component that we cover, we cover the psychosocial management also in the rehabilitation. And then the last one is the fitness and function, which can be done by physical activity and uh, exercise training. And we can use a remote monitoring to check the physical activity and also video conferencing platforms to check the patient progress in, um, the, uh, in their condition. So here are some of the parameters of daily rehabilitation and what are the monitoring devices and what can be monitored uh, using this uh, smart uh, devices. So we have the exercise. For an exercise, we can monitor the uh, step count. We can use our patients who use a pedometer. They can, they can assess themselves uh, how many steps they are walking in a day. So there are a lot of apps available for kilometers and then check the heart rate uh, ECG of course um, when you see the app it is physical so it should be done by uh, the, uh, the uh, during a physical assessment yeah, so they're doing uh, or you can use a sensor for checking the ECG and then a physical activity so and then the bow scale and also the rest of the so bow scale is a, a modified postcode at a 10 point scale, which is the exertion level of the patient. So that can be observed. And then a smoking. So patient can provide a self-report about themselves. So, so and then the measurements that can done for smoking are carbon monoxide measurements, urinary port, uh, portina and blood pressure. And the psychological can be cognitive and knowledge test, depression scale, anxiety assessment, sleep and quality. All these will have a different uh, questioners which can be filtered by the patient and that they can uh, they can see the improvement in their service and also through um, tele um, conferencing or uh, video conferencing uh, schedules they can uh, have their counseling sessions arranged. Blood pressure control uh, like systolic blood pressure, systolic pressure and all this can be checked using the um, WhatsApp uh, app. Diet and weight, uh, weight management, can check the BMI, blood liquid balance, uh, levels, and then 24 hours food recall, meal menu, diet score, and calories. So these are some of the parameters of daily rehabilitation and uh, some of the monitoring devices uh, which can be used. So, how do you establish a virtual cardiac? Say so you want to set up a um, uh, cardiac rehabilitation program using uh, tele rehabilitation. How to set up a program? So, a uh, first step will be uh, use a handbook to help staff delivering care virtually and find a comprehensive resource suitable for patients and staff. So, this is like they told you uh, before this, you have, the patient has to go through the whole tele rehabilitation process, like the assessment, the treatment planning, and everything. So, only then person who is um, suitable or eligible for a cardiac rehabilitation program, that's when we can start planning the cardiac daily rehabilitation program. So first is uh, uh, finding, uh, delivering the care virtually and find a comprehensive resource suitable for patients and staff. Okay. Second step is don't do. So even uh, sometimes the patient will be reluctant to do a daily rehabilitation. So most of them have a mindset that you know, only when we go to the institution or go to the hospital, then only the care will be good. So we will not be able to do the treatment effectively when it is a home base or when it is a um, tele-monitoring tele, um, um, way of doing it. So you have to encourage the patient 
to attend minimum assessment to discuss theory rehabilitation process and follow a shared decision making process regarding the rehabilitation implementation. So at, at this stage, what happens is when you're engaging the patient, there are a lot of um, lot of uh, ways to follow that. So what you can do is first um, aware of the patient first of all to be aware of the rehabilitation. You have to initiate this awareness of that. Thing. So you have to uh, explain them about more cases that are been going to the rehabilitation and the improvements they have got and all that. So create an awareness of that. Thing. So and then once uh, the awareness is created, the patient will show more. So you see that the patient you have to check the interest of the patient, whether the patient is out of a compulsion whether the patient is doing or whether the patient is really interested in doing this and then the readiness so once the patient is having an awareness and once the patient is trying to develop an interest on the uh, process of daily rehabilitation so they will show readiness to accept it so once they show readiness to accept it then you can see like uh, you need to check the intention so what is the intention whether the patient really wants to do it uh, for getting better or really want to escape from the rehabilitation, why, what is the real intention of the patient to uh, accept for the readiness of the rehabilitation. So final step in this will be a decision making. So once all this process goes through, once the uh, awareness has been created, the patient shows interest and readiness to accept and then you see the interest of the patient is genuine and then after that the decision will be made. So once the decision is made, the patient will either accept for the rehabilitation or the patient will reject for the rehabilitation. So once the patient accepts for the rehabilitation, then we can um, ask uh, after a few uh, weeks, a few months, we will evaluate and again we check the patient's uh, situation. Okay. Sometimes the patient will uh, consent to continue the daily rehabilitation, sometimes they discontinue the daily rehabilitation. So may, many will not be happy or satisfied by doing the In the other case, the person who has rejected, can, they can also accept. Okay, I think I should try this. I should make, uh, uh, maybe this will be more effective. So they can later have a late adoption to the rehabilitation process or they may continue the so this is uh, after um, after this step, then you need to focus on the core competence. So once the patient is ready, the patient is ready to uh, give this, then you focus on the core uh, competence. Then design a, a patient, a design a patient exercise program. Okay. So the so ex example is given there for the uh, six minute walk test for exercise capacity and example is given. So designing a individual person exercise program. That's what we talk about the FIPD principle. So based on the frequency, intensity, uh, time, and the type, we design a the exercise prescription for the patient. So along with, so when you do an exercise prescription, we concentrate on the aerobic capacity as well as the upper limit means strengthening. And then offer group sessions, like reduce intensive individual sessions when possible to join the group session. So there is like uh, sometimes doing uh, exercise alone will be, uh, patient may not be able to, uh, may feel bored. So in that case, you can, in few, uh, you can do them as a group exercise. They can see the other people uh, also working out and they will get more inspiration and they see them on the screen. And this kind of uh, group exercise also can be um, encouraged in the career rehabilitation process. And then uh, last, there is evaluation. Formalize and evaluate the process to assess the efficacy and characteristic of individualist daily rehabilitation. Okay. The last one is investing in access to the daily rehabilitation. So next slide is about uh, progression of technology in daily rehabilitation. So this is like how the, uh, the technology has been used in daily rehabilitation over the years. Okay. So uh, initially, like um, as I told you in the beginning of this webinar, like in 1940s itself, uh, telemedicine was in the US. So uh, tele-rehabilitation is a part of telemedicine, but 
during uh, in the 40s delhi rehabilitation was not quite uh, they did not take delhi rehabilitation among them so the first and foremost was they started in the first with the hotel management is about uh, phone consultation so this started way back in 1940s and it was and this was done by the master the master was the one that was the later in 1960s again technology was used to communicate with the astronauts Um, in 1960, by the NASA, so it gave them um, consultations over the uh, phone. So they were using this technology to um, connect with the astronauts and giving them medical advice. And the whole thing of tele rehabilitation started in 1980. So there are very few pilot studies and very few researches um, done on tele rehabilitation. So in 1980s. it started as a telephone conversation or telephone so through telephone they were trying to uh, get the history of the patient they were trying to do the subjective assessment for the patient and then they were uh, they asked the patient to do a free record of video material and then send it to them so this started by the 1980s and then in 1990s um, it switched to live video conferencing or web based interactive software so this uh, video after the advent um, of video uh, introduction of video conferencing so they were able to see the patient and they were able to talk and uh, discuss uh, the patient with them and then the text messaging and technology and what they were doing in this uh, video conferencing is consultation uh, diagnostic assessment and delivery of treatment providing verbal and visual interaction between the and then the text messaging or technology so let's say uh, to you should not miss your appointment you have an appointment so all your things were done by using the text messages and sending reports to the text messaging then sensor based technology and the virtual reality all these started in the 1990s and it uh, is still um, uh, progressing now so later days like in, in the smartphones and applications so that is the latest advances in um, tele rehabilitation so we get the app and everything and um, some of the cr related apps are the pedometer uh, heart rate apps blood pressure apps checking the bmi and everything in 2012 around 40000 health related apps were available and uh, they were used to send health measure electronic electronic So next, we will see the uh, tele rehabilitation CR condition. So here we are just going to see some of the evidence, some of the studies which have proved that tele rehabilitation has been proved effective in CR condition. So first, according to Pierre Trovitz, he had told in 2013, coronary heart disease is the leading cause of death locally, and cardiac rehabilitation programs reduce the risk. So, uh, talking about cardiac rehabilitation, as I told you, we have an inpatient phase as well as we have an outpatient phase. So, in the inpatient phase, it is a hospital setup, and the people will be seen face to face. When they go for an uh, outpatient phase, the outpatient phase, uh, the uh, mostly they don't come back for treatment. They, once the patient person is discharged, discharge, they don't uh, try to come back. So, uh, cardiac rehabilitation programs reduce recurrent events, improve risk factors, and enhance quality of life through physical activity and education. However, only one third of eligible patients attend a CR program. Availability of such programs is limited, particularly in areas with low levels of development and low population density. Therefore, innovative models for secondary prevention are necessary. Access by adaptation of such programs to the diversity of people and community. Monitoring cardiovascular risk factors seems to be particularly appropriate for the use of telemedicine. This includes health applications to improve lifestyle, health surveillance, education, psychological support, and interactive motivational tools with the final goal of reducing metabolic risk factors and reducing cardiovascular morbidity and death. So, Pastor Bernal, Bernal at all at 2021 uh, says individual and group cardiac rehabilitation programs reduce cardiovascular morbidity and mortality by reducing recurrent events, improving risk factors, aiding compliance with drug treatment, and improving quality of life through physical activity and education. Home-based programs are equally effective in improving exercise capacity, risk factors, mortality, 
and health related quality of life outcomes from such a hospital based intervention. Cardio tele rehabilitation program for a supplement or an alternative to hospital rehabilitation program providing similar benefits to usual hospital and so pulmonary rehabilitation is effective in reducing this according to my uh, story in 2021 and improving health status and exercise tolerance of patients with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. The coronavirus pandemic impacted PR programs and their delivery conditions. So in the period of viral transmission and results and outbreak of COVID-19, institution-based PR programs have been forced to significantly reduce and further for some cases completely shut down during the pandemic. And the majority of your patients are elderly and have multiple comorbidities, including cardiovascular disease and diabetes. They are notably susceptible to severe complications of the disease. As such, patients have been advised to stay at home and avoid social contact to the maximum extent possible. This has increased patients' vulnerability to physical deconditioning, depression, and social isolation. To address this major gap in care, some traditional hospital or clinic center PR programs have converted. Uh, some or all of their learning concerns to home based rehabilitation during the pandemic. There are, however, some significant barriers to this approach that have impeded its implementation in the community. These include various access and use of technology, a lack of standardization of methods and tools for evaluation of the program, and inadequate training and resources for health professionals and optimally delivering the career rehabilitation education. There is a pressing need for high quality studies on these modalities of care to enable the successful implementation of care at home and via teleconferencing. According to Browers et al., uh, study the effects of cardiac tele rehabilitation patients with coronary artery disease using a personalized patient centered web application, so a protocol for the smart care care um, randomized control trial. This randomized control trial compares cardiac tele rehabilitation with center based. They are cardiac tele rehabilitation in patients with coronary artery disease. The core component of the intervention is the patient centered web application, which enables patients to adjust rehabilitation goals, instant training, and physical activity data, share data with other caregivers, and use video consultation. 300 patients were divided into two groups, experimental and a control group. After six supervised training sessions, the intervention took continuous uh, exercise training at home, wearing an accelerometer and heart rate monitor. In addition, physical activity levels are assessed by accelerometer for four days per week, and patients upload training and physical activity data weekly and receive feedback through video consultation once week. They conclude that this intervention has superior effects on exercise behavior without exceeding cause of a traditional center-based intervention. Effects and cause of home-based training with telemonitoring guidance in low to moderate risk patients and in cardiac rehabilitation, the FIT at home study. This randomized control trial compares a 12 week a telemonitoring um, guided home based training program to the regular 12 week center based training program of equal duration and training intensity in low to moderate risk patients entering cardiac rehabilitation after acute coronary uh, syndrome or cardiac intervention. The home based group received three supervised training sessions before they come on the training with the heart rate monitor at the home environment. Patients review individual coaching by telephone once a week based on measured heart rate data that are shared through the internet. This study will increase insight in long term effectiveness and cause of home based cardiac rehabilitation during one of the impacts. So, next, uh, according to Mary Sanjay, the uh, effects of cardiac tele rehabilitation during COVID 19 on cardiorespiratory capacities in patients with coronary artery disease. Patients were assigned to two three week PR programs tele rehabilitation and conventional center based PR. A delivery rehabilitation group wore a connected watch to monitor heart rate and gave the perception of the foot according to the modified book scale. The exercise training consists of one hour aerobic endurance and strength training sessions, and the target HR zone determined by results based on cardiopulmonary exercises and perception of the foot. A three week exercise program improved patients' cardiorespiratory system. Tele rehabilitation was as effective and represents a safe alternative CR program during the COVID 19. According to Rundle's study, uh, COPD patients for the effect of home based rehabilitation using telephone and video conferencing and means of daily rehabilitation. A control group of usual rehab care was included. So, nine studies were included for physical activity whether there were significant symptoms during daily healthcare. So, no difference between the group performed for physical capacity and physical health. So, daily healthcare was promoted to 
on court websites on mobile phones or with combined with education and health training. Comparators were ordinary uh, care, obstetric training, and other education. So, this uh, some of the guidance. So, when you want to start a daily rehabilitation program in your center or institution, so these are some of the guidance that you can follow for daily health. So, uh, what are the different um, 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 things that you have to consider. Let's say like when you want to start a daily rehab, you have to consider the uh, state uh, licensure for like in your country or your state. Do you have a licensure for to start something like this? And then review the telecommunication modalities. So ask for federal and state legislation and regulations. So, so the guidelines, how to follow or, um, or what are the, uh, how to set the policies and procedures and how to follow the ethical uh, principles all are given in these guidelines. You have all these websites which will guide you. So these are the reference. And thank you all for being patient. Thank you, Madam Sabita, for this insightful presentation where tele-rehabilitation is the need of the hour. So at this time when the world is becoming smaller and shrinking, tele-rehabilitation is a means by which rehabilitation can reach every nook and corner of the world. And dear viewers, if you have any question for our speaker, please leave a comment on the chat box. And as mentioned in the beginning of the webinar, an e-certificate will be provided to be and to be eligible for the certificate, you will need to fill in the survey form that can be found in the link provided in the comment section. So we go on to the question and answer session now. So we have a question here. What are the challenges in implementing a tele-rehabilitation program? Okay, thank you, Mr. Kassi, for the question. Uh, actually, when you see the challenges here, basically the challenges can be the human challenges like the acceptance, especially the people um, ready to accept the tele rehabilitation. Because, like traditionally, we have been uh, in a mindset of that we need to go to the hospital, get a treatment there, that's when it will be more effective. So, the first and foremost challenge is making the people to accept the tele rehabilitation program. The next one is coming from the organization, so the center or the hospitals that they're working. They should be able to um, um, they, be, they should be able to fund for this because compared to uh, the traditional way, uh, we need to more funding for tele rehabilitation. So let's say people who don't have the internet facilities and all that, we need to give them um, some equipment and all, uh, rent the equipment and all that. So there should be some funding for this. That is the next. And the third challenge here will be the technical challenges, so like having the broadband and all. These are some of the challenges and also some of the limitations that I mentioned in this. So all these are some challenges in implementing the tele rehabilitation program. Thank you, Madam Sabita. So we have another question here. How the progression of treatment is implemented in tele rehabilitation? So every time uh, when concerned with a cardio rehabilitation, the patient should be asked to take the time. So that's why when I, when I talk about the process of tele rehabilitation, like there was an evaluation component there. So there should be a physical evaluation done for the patient every time we progress the treatment. Because in cardio respiration, there are a lot of risks for the patient. So it is always uh, better to have a face to face session now and then with the patient instead of having a complete tele rehabilitation. So progression should always be based on the face-to-face -face consultation that we have with the patient. Does that uh, answer your question, Madam I think that should be clear. Yes. And uh, Madam Savita, we have another question here. Uh, can outcome measures be administered through online as well? Ah, yes, um, actually, like um, the outcome measure, we are or we are usually using the um, exertion level scale, the perceived exertion level scale, or we are using the heart rate or using the blood pressure. These are the common outcome measures that we use when we are giving an exercise training, and that can be done through the online. Because only thing, only challenge here is the patient has to understand how they have to use the uh, app and also like how they have to identify the exertion level scale. They have to understand the scale. So once they understand the scale, I think they can give you a clear idea on their outcome measure. 
thank you and uh, we have another question it's a little lengthy question now uh, should a tele rehab session be more expensive or less expensive in terms of cost and fees per session as compared to a normal physical session since performing a tele rehab session uses few resources to administer would it be cheaper however it takes it does take skills for the therapist to access a problem and give treatment would it cost more so according to the cost effectiveness as i told you in the presentation obviously less than it covers so only thing is that the patient has to spend some money on buying the devices so if you already have a device with you then it is not actually very cost a very um, costly or it's not very expensive then delivering is also not a big issue if you have your devices otherwise the company have Usually, like what they do in certain uh, institutions, they lend the devices to the patient. The patient feels that uh, they have a uh, problem in buying things, or their uh, economy is uh, very bad to buy things. Then the institution will lend them the devices, and they will be able to. Uh, and uh, according to me, it will be more uh, cost-effective compared to the because uh, it's not only this. The travel expenses and all those things we say. So, from the patient point of view, it is actually very possible. Thank you. There's another question, Madam Madam Sonia. Which tele apps are reliable to use? Um, as of now, as I told you, there are more than forty thousand apps in the Play Store. So, need to go and check for the reviews and use them. So there's no particular app that I can say that this is the best app and that is the best app to use for the, um, this um, daily rehabilitation purpose. So, so there are a lot of apps. When you go to the Play Store, you see there are a lot of apps for daily rehabilitation. Okay. Uh, we have another question from uh, Ethan Chong. Does daily rehabilitation really? Effective in helping CR patient. Uh, yes, it can uh, because they, according to the um, research, they, they, we have more than um, six hundred and seventy-seven systematic reviews which are proving that in, when you treat a CR patient, their rehabilitation has proved to be more effective. That's what the research tells, and um, some researchers tell that it is the same as the. Uh, institutional based um, treatment so it means that it is equally effective institutional based as well as the daily rehabilitation as long as you are monitoring your supervision the way you execute is good then it will be effective thank you madam sandeepa and uh, i think uh, there's no more questions from the audience so with this we come to the end of this session okay so with that we can conclude today's session and to our dear speaker thank you madam sabita for joining us and especially for the sharing your knowledge and to all our keen and attentive viewers thank you for joining our webinar we look forward to your comments and participation in the future events hosted by masa university for any further queries please visit contact us through masa website or you can visit our social media page thank you and have a pleasant day thank you everyone